wow, I didn't even send in a bio. <laughs> um, and I told Bill Johnson, I said this before, that I'm a Pentecostal preacher. They only gave me three minutes, and I need 15 minutes to get my engine warm. <laughs> so, but I do have a timer. I do have a timer. Um, who is uh, Chief Dennis Burns? Um, I'm going to speak how I came to know him and what I know about him. Chief Dennis Burns is someone who, whether he's protecting the President of the United States when they come to Palo Alto, or he's pr having a casual conversation with uh, former Secretary George Soros, he's still Dennis, and he treats everybody around him and all these dignitaries the same. He's the same person that is amongst other chiefs, and he um, comes to be a kind, gentle, um, spirited man that has constantly respected every culture, every ethnicity that he has come across. That's what I have witnessed. Who is Chief Dennis Burns? He's someone um, that I have found in the scripture that says, he that is greatest among you, let him be servant of all. Dennis is truly what, I, he truly exemplifies what I consider is a servant leader. He demonstrates this by showing up at youth events, coming early, staying late, uh, cleaning, mopping the floor, but he's the chief, remember? Um, he demonstrates this by overhearing some kids talking and then him finding a way to meet those kids' needs. That's Dennis Burns. Dennis Burns is someone that works a job, but truly, it's not a job to Dennis. It's Dennis's heart. He loves his job. He loves his people. And I work with a lot of chiefs, and I can honestly say, before you and before God, that out of all the chiefs I've worked with, this man, because I do get um, a lot of um, confessions, I'll say that, <laughs> by various levels of the police force and, and the uh, fire department, not one single officer, not one single staff member, male or female, has ever said anything negative about Dennis Burns. I cannot say that about the 10, seven to 10 chiefs I've worked with. That says something because yes, they are to be respected in a paramilitary organization, but he's not just respected, he's liked. That's different. He's liked so much that when he would come over to East Palo Alto and work with kids from East Palo Alto in Menlo Park, that after they found out he was a police officer, they said, you're kidding me. He's a cop? <laughs> this guy who comes early, stays late, doesn't do a lot of talking, but listens? He's a cop? And so, I don't, I, I don't know if you noticed by my tan, but I'm a person of color. <laughs> and he has done more, because, you know, let's be, keep it real. People of color and the police have not always seen eye to eye. He has done more for the city of Palo Alto and for police officers all around in this local area than any police chief that I know. Where kids from communities of color all around respect him, they know him, and they say, you know what? I want to be a cop. That's who Dennis Burns is. He's a friend to the friendless, he's a leader to the leaderless, and he's a brother to the brotherless. Dennis Burns is someone that I have seen cry with community members, with officers. I've seen him help others where it cost him, and yet he still, on the weekends, after working a 60, 70 hour work week, would go and spend time with his daughter Emily's at her volleyball tournament for the whole weekend. I'm not finished, but I'm gonna quit because I'm four minutes. That's who Dennis Burns is.
Hi, everybody. Pastor Baines, thank you so much. I hope I get to meet this guy sometime. <laughs> um, that was very generous, and uh, believe me, I am, uh, I'm humbled. <clears throat> and uh, I've had a great opportunity to work with Pastor Baines, and he, is, uh, he has enriched my life. He's a great resource for our community, great resource for our employees, tremendous family man. Glad to have his wife, Cheryl, here tonight as well. Um, he's, he's committed to helping the less fortunate in our communities. And uh, besides being a great mentor and uh, confidant, he's an amazing ping pong player. <laughs> and we're going to put out the challenge here. I haven't run this by him, but we're going to challenge you all to doubles ping pong. Anybody wants to play us, come on down. We think we can beat you. We're just saying. And also, if you, uh, if you have some time and you were inclined to want to uh, volunteer or donate money, clothes, Project We Hope is a very needy and a very useful, uh, it's, it's a great place to donate to, and uh, they're helping a lot of great folks. So uh, again, thank you all for being here tonight. I want to thank my beautiful wife, Lisa Burns. Give us a wave, honey. So uh, for uh, almost 30 years, I've, uh, I've been extremely uh, lucky to, to have her be so supportive and understanding and uh, forgiving and encouraging me to pursue my, uh, my career. And um, I'm a very fortunate man to have found and probably more importantly kept uh, <laughs> such a wonderful woman. So thank you, honey. And after this is all over, guys, I'm available for any private uh, marriage counseling. You might need me. <laughs> Our daughter, Emma, is not here tonight. She's playing volleyball. It was uh, either be uh, here tonight or miss the volleyball trip to Reno this weekend. So she says, hey, what's up? That's her two cents from you. <laughs> Thanks to the Palo Alto Weekly. Thanks to the Chamber. Uh, I want to congratulate the, uh, the other winners, the Sheraton Weston Hotels, Palo Alto Community Child Care, Kathy Croyman, and thanks for all that you've done for the great city of Palo Alto. Thanks to the command staff who are here. Um, I'll read their names here in just a second. Um, and I want to uh, shout out to Lynn Johnson, who was my former boss here. Lynn, <laughs> great to see you. Worked with Lynn for over 27 years, and um, she spent a lot of time with me. She's very generous with her advice as well as her uh, her mentoring. And uh, I want to thank you for all the opportunities you afforded me. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Keene, the executive management team, for your encouragement, uh, camaraderie, advice, uh, and I also want to recognize the council for their constant support and their vision for Palo Alto. And uh, Palo Alto didn't get to be what it is by accident. It's because people like our council and the previous councils wanted it to be a great city. A guy named Joel Klotkin wrote a book called The City, a historical perspective. He talked about that Palo Alto, or a city needed to be three things. It needed to be safe, sacred, and busy. And our councils have consistently made sure that that's the case. So thank you so much. Um, I want to say uh, I'm incredibly honored to be here tonight. And um, I'm also incredibly honored to work for the citizens of Palo Alto through the Palo Alto Police Department. Um, as you know, Palo Alto enjoys some unique tangibles and intangibles. And despite all of our wealth and attributes, uh, we're not immune from social issues like Hal was talking about, crime, homelessness, addiction, uh, poverty, mental illness. And while these issues are complex and thorny, um, we, the police department, are charged with uh, dealing with these calls. And we seek resolutions that are legal, appropriate, and we always want to treat our, all the parties with compassion, dignity, and respect, regardless of their race, their sex, or their economic status. And we seek to solve these problems through the strong relationships with the neighborhood groups, the schools, businesses, the faith-based communities, community groups, 
our friends at Stanford, and other entities. So a uh, real couple quick seconds about our, uh, the folks that I work with, the men and women of the Palo Alto Police Department. Uh, they are day-to-day -day heroes and take great pride in providing exceptional public safety services to this community. And uh, quite frankly, I'm honored to uh, wear the same uniform. The organization consists of volunteers, public safety dispatchers, police record specialists, community service officers, animal control officers, administrative staff, and sworn officers. And I'm exceptionally proud of their professionalism and the service they render, which adds value to this community. When we're hiring uh, employees, uh, we, we look for a variety of characteristics, as you might guess, but the one thing that sticks out is character. And uh, we give that the most weight because we know that uh, employees that possess character uh, are likely to create trusting relationships. And these trusting relationships allow us to solve problems. And we want our staff to be part of the community, not apart from the community. We know that trust is uh, the currency that we deal with and when we, when we interact with the community. And uh, trust is uh, very easily lost, hard to gain, and very difficult to regain. So uh, literally I can give you dozens and dozens of examples of the outstanding work of, uh, of these people here. And um, I'm gonna read an email actually um, that I just got this week. And it's from a guy who uh, isn't always complimentary of the police. There's one or two of them here in Palo Alto. <laughs> and um, actually, he's, he's a really good guy, and he's a very supportive of our homeless population. And he gives me very direct feedback. And I'll read you the second, uh, second part of it. He starts, hi, Dennis, last Saturday. I was walking down, up and down University Avenue with the Downtown Streets team, of which I'm a proud member. <laughs> hey, now. Uh, we were picking up litter, as usual, but had families with us from Menlo Park Presbyterian shouting us. And it was our Compassion Weekend Retreat at the MPPC. And then I'm going to skip a part, then go down to... Uh, and we're coming back up the north side of University, and we see a cruiser double parked in front of Starbucks with its roof lights on. There is no cop in the car. He's in the Starbucks with coffee. He's a handsome young Korean guy, good head of black hair, maybe six foot, 170. <laughs> Great description. <laughs> There's an older cop drives up to him, get out of his, gets out of his car, and speaks to him. We speculate, he's saying, hey, leaving the roof lights on to get coffee? Really? What are you trying to do, advertise you're taking a break? But we had no idea what was being said uh, because we weren't that close enough to hear. The young cop doesn't go back to his car. He walks a couple doors further west and ducks into a doorway, which, a blue tar which covers a blue tarp covering a homeless appearing woman and two shopping carts. I believe it's the woman who lives in a lean-to on Emerson just north of University. Anyway, this cop ducks down under her tarp and hands her the coffee, I'm guessing. A few kind words. I thought, I told him, he is a kind man. I just thought out that you ought to know what, what your officers are up to. They're committing charity and compassion and unnecessary acts of kindness to unsheltered people. God bless them. I'll call you about that cup of coffee. <laughs> so <clears throat> I want to point out a couple of, uh, couple of our staff that are here tonight. Uh, so I have uh, Bob Beacom, who's the acting assistant chief. Charlie Cullen. Charlie, where are you? There you go. I got a bunch of them, so we're going we're gonna to do this, the Palo Alto single clap for them. Okay? Uh, the person that really keeps the trains running around the police department, Barbara Texera. Barb? <laughs> Michael Kahn, who I believe was actually the person that was just uh, mentioned in that email. Mike? <laughs> Jeremy Schmidt. Cindy Kono. Tony Becker, Dwayne Tannock, Ian Hagerman, Bob Bonilla, Dave Floor, and he's not sitting at the table, but Ken Duker. 
Also, um, I'll wrap this up here pretty quick, though. Uh, this last uh, month or so is kind of a tough time for us. We lost uh, two really important people in our organization. Um, we had uh, Dennis Neverby, who was a police officer for the Palo Alto Police Department for uh, 46 years, passed away uh, early in March. And we also had uh, uh, another very uh, important uh, person um, pass away here as well. And we had uh, we had uh, uh, ceremonies for them, and they were very much lost. Je George Browning was the second person. George was uh, um, a member of the community. He was in the... Uh, police department for 21 years as a volunteer and uh, made significant contributions. And uh, tonight um, we have with us Barbara Stouffer and Jean Wilcox who sit in our tables. And we just want to say thank you for coming and thank you for your service and supporting them. <clears throat> so uh, in closing, Attorney General Robert Kennedy said, every community gets the kind of law enforcement it insists upon and we want to be that law enforcement organization for you. But we also want to be a resource you can count on when you have a problem that might not be police related. So thank you for your attention. I want to thank the Chamber and the Weekly again for this special recognition. Good night.